always liked the home building industry. My dad was a home builder, so I grew up with him. I've liked the business ever since. Um, just the um, working outside, working with my hands, um, clearing lots, clearing land, uh, it's just been fun to me and I've been doing it 30 years and have enjoyed it ever since. I started in the Home Builders Association in 1986 when I opened my business. I felt like that was my home, that was where I needed to be. I had come to my first summer board meeting with the state in 1977 when my father was local president in Birmingham. And I can remember at the time it was in Des it was in Sandestin, but it was across where the shops are now and we had to get on the bus and ride to the beach. and It was a long um, trip, but it was a lot of fun. I can remember them standing out by the pool and talking, Dad and Bentley Owen and, and Lester Wyatt and all the old guys that uh, would stand out and talk and talk about business and talk about the things we talk about now. Um, that was fun to me back then and um, it's still fun today. My first impression of Taylor was that uh, he seemed to be a, a businessman, seemed to be very honest and forward and concerned about doing the work and being a part of the greater Birmingham Home Builders Association. Uh, I first met Taylor at a uh, winter meeting, a HBA meeting. Uh, I think it was in the old uh, Embassy Suites when we had the meetings there several years back. And uh, my first impression of him was he was just an outgoing guy. He, he went up to new members and just approached them and wanted to know about them. And uh, he was just an overall friendly guy. Uh, I first met Taylor when I chaired uh, a committee at GBAHB and he was president of GBAHB and I remember him going to all the committee meetings, whether it was, you know, parade or women's council or whatever the committee was, remodelers, going to those committee meetings and um, letting everybody know how much he appreciated the work that they did and he pledged his support of those committees, um, you know, during his presidency. And that showed me how dedicated he was to the association and the, the success of the members and, uh, and our association. Words that I would use to describe Taylor would be somewhat, he's confrontational, uh, he can be hard-headed, um, and again, I, I, I do not think those words are negative adjectives for anybody as long as you're dedicated and sold on what you're doing. And Taylor is a very dedicated individual. His dedication to our industry, his mentorship and leadership for our association has benefited us in so many ways. He is, um, he's, he's one of those down-to-earth people that just makes you feel like you've known him forever from the first time that you have a conversation with him. Taylor's impact on the association uh, mainly is in leadership and he's done so much with education and carpenter programs and plumbing programs for uh, younger people getting involved in the business. And when I go to these carpentry classes that our foundation does or the Skills USA classes, um, I love seeing these kids graduate. I love seeing these kids passionate about framing a house. Um, those won't be the framers in 10 years, they'll be the builders in 10 years. They'll have crews that'll frame for them because they're passionate about it today. And um, that's, the, that's the next generation of builders I see it, coming out of those classes. Uh, I describe Taylor as dedicated, innovative, and funny. I remember not too long after I met Taylor, you know, as I said at, at an association meeting, I'm pulling up at Lowe's, and I see him walking out, and I thought, oh, well, I'll go speak to him. But then all of a sudden, I see him running, and I thought, well, he must be in a hurry. No, he jumps up on the back of the buggy and rides it to his car. That's when I realized just how many children Aaron really had. <laughs> Taylor deserves to be in the Hall of Fame because of the work that he's done for his local association as a president, the work that he's done for our state association as a president, and the fact that he wants to remain active in our association. And I think he's succeeded at all those levels. I think Taylor's induction into the Hall of Fame is a result of his dedication and hard work in our industry. I would like to congratulate Taylor uh, on being elected into the State Hall of Fame. There are a lot of great people that have uh, preceded him in this and he's as worthy as anybody that's uh, been inducted. Congratulations, Taylor.
And Tater, I want to congratulate you on being inducted into the Hall of Fame for, for Alabama. I know that this is a big honor for you. It's a big honor for us, for you to be from Birmingham and being inducted to the Hall of Fame. I'm very proud of you and want to tell you congratulations. Taylor, I congratulate you for being inducted to the Alabama Home Builders Hall of Fame. It's a great honor, well deserved, and I'm honored to know you. When I was state president in 13, I thought that was the highest office I would ever hold um, in my whole life for anything. It was a huge honor, and it was great to, to be in that office. Um, now being put in the State Hall of Fame, uh, being selected by my peers is something that, um, it's just the biggest honor in my life. There's no question this will be the, the highest point I receive. I'd love to thank my family, uh, my wife Erin, who supported me. Um, a lot of times she asked me why I was going to so many home builders meetings, but she's, she's seen that I love it, that I'm passionate about it and uh, she's with me a lot of those times. My kids have come to all the home builders meetings. They come to a lot of state meetings, uh, especially summer board, they love the beach. The, uh, my partner, Blake, um, he's, he doesn't come to a lot of home builders meetings, but he does sit in the office while I'm at home builders meetings. So um, he, he makes that part work. And there are, um, Sounds weird, but I'd like to thank everybody. Everybody in this family that's been on this journey with me has gotten me to be in this position. It is like a big family, and so, um, you know, they kind of say the people make the party. Well, this the people make this association. That's what it's about, and it's uh, very special to me. I was in the banking business in Atlanta, Georgia, and got involved uh, uh, with builders there. I was actually in the savings and loan business, and my family and I moved to Mobile, Alabama. Uh, I was with a title insurance company uh, in Mobile, and got involved in, in closing builder, lo builder loans in, in the Mobile area. And, uh, before I knew it, I was involved in going to their monthly meetings, involved in the Associates Council, and um, got on the board of directors. Kelly and I actually worked together at Colonial Bank back in the mid-90s, and it was uh, very interesting to see his, his uh, method and being such a diplomatic person and uh, the ultimate gentleman. It was always a pleasure to watch Kelly and the way he interacted with people, and I tried to uh, emulate that to a certain degree. I think my first impression of him when I saw him, Kelly comes, Kelly wears starch shirt, starch pants. I mean, he's he's GQ, and I said, "Oh Lord, who is this dude?" You know. He and I got involved in first in the um, Mobile Home Builders, and then he moved on, or I moved on to the state, and then he just kind of went up was an area VP when I, I just kind of handed it off to him and we just been following each other all the way up. And um, we kind of, when it started out, we I'd go to a state meeting, I slept on his couch because at the time uh, Mobile Gas wasn't paying for me to go, so I stayed on his couch. But through the years, um, we just have a great relationship and, um, and it's still going on. I would say Kelly in three words would first be a gentleman then I would say he's a diplomat, and then he is very dedicated to anything that he gets involved with, big or small. A true Southern gentleman. I mean, since day one, he's always, he's willing to help everybody out, and when the ladies come around, he's more than willing to help them out. <laughs> uh, he was noted around Mobile by the women as the Southern gentleman, and he certainly is. I think he's just been a great mentor in general for the local HBA to get involved in a state level, and he's done that with myself. Um, and he's just a real uh, spokesman and advocate for the HBAA. He's always participating and encouraging everyone else to attend and to get involved on a state level. Uh, Kelly is a very caring person, and it's not fake. In other words, 
if something's wrong with your family, if something's wrong that you're doing wrong with your job, or whatever, he'll ask about it. How are you doing? You know, um, uh, he, he's very caring. You know, without being too mushy, he's he's uh, he's sincere and he's genuine about the way he uh, he cares about people and everything. He's just a hard worker. He's always willing to help out, and he knows just about everybody in the state because he's involved with them in all the different locals from around the state. As I said, he's a member of Mobile and he's a member of Baldwin County and then I know he's a member of several others. He's just a hard worker, always willing to help out and he's he's a fair man. He's He'll give you a true, uh, his true opinion on how things should be done. But we went on a just an overnight hunting trip, one afternoon and one morning and uh, and Kelly said, well, you know, we'll just bring, bring, bring what you want. Beanie weenies, whatever hot dogs or whatever so we get to this place he said it's an old shack up on the river well we got up there and everybody started getting drank them a little alcoholic beverage and everything well he opened he brings this giant ice chest out to the deck of this cottage he wasn't no shack opened up his ice chest where there was some about inch and a half inch uh, inch and a half inch uh rib ice and a bunch of cornish hens but it was just typical things that he does that, that's just the way he uh, he does things, and uh, and we, we just come to expect that from him and everything. Well, I think Kelly has just been a great example for many years and has always been there year after year, and he's advanced through the, the ladder and has just been very dedicated to the HBAA and encourages other people to be as well. He's a people person, but he's a doer, and you can just about count on what he says, whether it be a local level or whether it be on the state level. It's, he's got good advice and it's very mature advice. And I think a lot of, there's more, he's got more followers than he thinks. I definitely would like to congratulate Kelly. He is very deserving. He's worked very hard. He is the biggest advocate I know for the HBAA and has gotten myself involved. And I've learned to truly enjoy that. And I give Kelly all the credit for that. Kelly has been a good friend for me for the last 25 plus years. Uh, again, a, a true gentleman, very hard worker, and I, this is an honor that he deserves, and I'm happy to have been one of the ones to help him get it. Uh, he's just a great guy, and this is an honor he surely deserves. So deserving. I know there's a lot of guys throughout the state who are probably right there on par with him and everything, but I don't think there's one person in this whole association and in, in the state HBAA that would say, well, why didn't we pick so-and-so? Well, I mean, he's a unanimous choice, I would guarantee you, from everybody from Huntsville to Mobile. As we are members of associations, uh, like the Home Builders Association of Alabama, it would not be possible uh, without the support of my wife of 45 years my family, two children, and three granddaughters, and then a supporting uh, employer like First Federal Bank. I've been with them for 20 plus years. And without the support of those, um, those two, I don't, I don't really see how I could do that. So I would just like to, to thank them, and they, they probably deserve, deserve this more than, than Kelly Utes does. This, this is a, a humbling experience being presented with this. Looking back over, over the number of years of the people that, that I'm following uh, is just, just impressive to me. So I want to thank the selection committee, uh, Mobile Home Builders Association for putting me up for this award, and thank you very much. started in the real estate business first, actually in 1978. And in the early 80s, we realized there was a need for more new homes and all of that. So we kind of formed a, a company that I actually headed up and uh, got in my blood. And a few years later, I had my own company and it's been the same ever since. In the early 80s, Marshall County was kind of a a new association, it had been around a few years. Kenneth Warren was heavily involved in getting it started back then. Dan Taylor was a big part of it back then, and 
I can't really remember my first meeting. I just remember going and getting involved and, and staying involved. He's been concerned with the building business and everything that we do in it and trying to strive for the quality and the professionalism in the business that we will look for and that we would hope everybody had. And I believe that Don has, has really been an example of that in his leading of the, his local and, and moving on up into the state also. I've been seeing Don around state meetings for a number of years. Don had a position of uh, chairing the rural housing and uh, he did a fair amount of rural housing. He knew a lot about rural housing, so he was to be the chair. And when they realized I was not on the executive committee, did some back checking, you know, he surrendered his position as chair so that I could have it and still be a part of the executive committee. Uh, he didn't have to do that. Three words that I'd use to describe Don would be he's honest, he's sincere, and he's uh, credible in everything that he does. He, he, uh, strives to show everybody the, the good side of the building industry and, and, and his leadership too. A lot of people didn't know how to how to go about uh, working A&D and, and building and, and then ultimately selling. He had real estate too, you know. So uh, he showed everybody in the room, opened his books up to show people this is how you do it. Not everybody would do something like that. He's been a, he's been a true leader in his local He's uh, also served as well in the state in the different chairmanships that he's carried through, especially in the rural housing when he was the chairman of that. He was our state president and he's moved on from the state president to being a director in the national and, and attending the national meetings and carrying through with the different meetings up there. He's a leader. He's a leader for our industry. He'll tell you anything you want to know about how to do business, how he does business. Uh, he'll tell you about the mistakes he's made as well as uh, those things that are positive. Uh, he's a sharing kind of a guy. And, uh, and that is what the young people join our association for, is, is to learn. And he is, uh, he's a teacher. He's taught me a lot. Since 2004, when I was state president, the Republican convention was being held in New York. Uh, or HBAA had, was a sponsor on some of the events for the Alabama delegates. So myself, wife Sherry, Bud Cantor, who was first vice president, and his wife, uh, Sue, we all went to New York to represent the association. And while we were there, I'd ask Bud, I said, Bud, when we get around some of these dignitaries, you know, like Governor Riley and some of these others, I'd appreciate it if you'd address, address me as Mr. President. Well, so we go on the harbor tour. No, he doesn't say anything. We have dinner with Fannie Mae. <clears throat> doesn't address me as Mr. President. So finally, when we're walking down the streets of New York, we run up on a New York cop. We're gonna ask him some directions or something. And right then and there, Bud says, Mr. President. Bud, really, New York cop. One of the best memories I've got of, of Don is, is the year that he and his wife came to a board, a summer board meeting, I believe it was, and they were talking about going to adopt their daughter, Emma. And just seeing the, the smiles and the gleam in their eyes of being able to do that, they had been trying for so long and they finally got approved to do it. And then watching them over the years with their daughter, growing up and coming to the summer board has it's, it's meant a lot to me. He's worked hard. He's come a long way. And he is certainly uh, um, one who, uh, who deserves to be a part of the uh, Hall of Fame. And um, Don, congratulations. Done a good job, come a long way, and you're very deserving. And uh, I'm glad it's time. I would like to welcome Don to the Alabama Hall of Fame. It's well deserved. You've been a very meaningful example to a lot of people, and I think it's well deserved and it's well overdue. And that's the best I can say. Congratulations, Don. I can't think of a better person to deserve it. 
I'd like to thank Bill Deloney because sometime back in the 90s, um, Bill decided I was worthy to be a, when he was state president, worthy to be on, on the ladder as a presidential appointee. And Bill's been a good friend and a, and a, and a mentor ever since all of these years. Um, obviously, I'd like to thank the people at home that backed me up. My brother, Aaron Sperlin, uh, he passed away in 2015. But he had my back at home while I could go to all of these meetings. So, you know, I really, I really owe him for that. And last but not least, my family, Sh Sherry and, and, and Emma. Uh, Sherry, thank you. I appreciate it. She's always been supportive and still is supportive and a, and a big, big advocate for, for a home builder. So. This is probably one of the most highest honors that I've ever had. And the reason that I feel that way is because it comes from a group, comes from the association, it comes from people that I've spent decades with and have the absolute utmost respect for. So I'm truly humbled and truly honored.